Hi, this is Dino, and I would like to show you how to use the quota policy in Apogee Edge with Verify API key. To do that, I'm going to use the wizard inside Apogee Edge to create a new API proxy. This backend that I've specified is just a service that reflects back some information about the request that gets sent in. In the wizard, I'll select API key verification. I do want a quota, and I'll select uh, publish an API product. And I'll just sort of next through uh, the rest of the wizard screens. And what this is going to do is generate an API proxy as well as a companion API product. Let's have a look at the API proxy first. Um, click through to the develop tab and I can see in the proxy preflow three policies. The first is the verify API key policy and it's looking for the API key in the query param. That's configurable. The second one removes the API key from the query params, and that's just to protect that secret from, uh, we're not going to send it to the back end. Finally, we have the quota policy, and the quota policy is uh, configured handily enough with references to the variables that get populated by the verify API key policy. And these uh, variables specify the allowed quota, the interval number of uh, time units and then the time unit. So it'll be a thousand per hour or a thousand per month or whatever it is. All right. So that's all the execution instructions in the API proxy. Now, th the API product is the thing that gives us the actual quota metadata. And here we have it, a thousand requests per month. This is dynamically going to be loaded in to that API proxy when uh, a uh, authenticated call is received. But in order to do that, we need an API key or um, a developer app. So let's create one. So we'll create KQ1 as the developer app. We'll associate that to uh, just select a developer. And we'll select the generated key quota product. Save that. And what that's going to do is give me an app. This is the API key or the consumer key. And now what I can do is go back to the API proxies, um, the deployed API proxy, the key quota, and turn on tracing. So let's start a session. And we'll flip over to a terminal window and uh, invoke that API proxy. So here is the DNS name for that virtual host. Here is the base path. I specify the API key. And sure enough, that request works. And I can go into the trace window and see the verify API key policy has executed successfully. And you'll see that it populates automatically the metadata from the API product, that 1,000 per month. Uh, as well as a bunch of other information associated to the API product, like uh, the developer, uh, sorry, that's associated to the developer app, and so on. And then in the quota, uh, in the trace for the quota policy, we can see that it's applying 10,000 per one month. Okay, so that's great. What if we would like a different API product with a different quota? Easy, let's do that. KQ, uh, we'll call it KQ2, uh, we'll deploy it to test. Um, we do not need to worry about uh, the scopes, but we will put in 100 per, let's say, hour. How about that? And we need to add in the API proxy. So that's going to be key quota, the thing that we just generated with a wizard. Now I have a second API product, but I still need uh, a developer app. In other words, an API key associated to that. So we'll call this one uh, kq underscore two app. And uh, same developer, uh, and we will select uh, this product, so that second product that we created. And just as before, this creating a developer app will generate a new uh, API key, and I can see that. I'll grab that one, flip over to my terminal window, and uh, actually paste that in. So now we're invoking the same API proxy with a different API key, and at runtime, that will res resolve to a different API product. Flipping back over now to my trace, we'll see a second request has come in, and it's got that new API key in it, and you'll see that it is resolving as expected to that new API product that I call that I called KQ underscore two. And the quota, in fact, is uh, the quota policy is enforcing the quota based on the metadata that's configured in the API product. So that's it. That is how you can use the verify API key policy along with the quota policy to enforce product specific quotas in Apogee Edge. Thanks.